All right, everyone, I've got some exciting news. We have got a new single target boss event coming to the global version of the game. And I wanted to share with you guys some things that you're going to want to do to prepare for this event so that you guys can get right into it and get all the rewards as efficiently as you can. So if you take a look at the early release notes here, you'll see event boss battle demon Kimara is coming. Now, if you're wondering who this is, this is the giant evil Pikachu looking boss that the JP version of the game got three to four months ago or so now. I think actually he probably looks a little bit closer to Electabuzz than Pikachu, but I think everyone knows who Pikachu is, so we'll just go with that. Now, I wanted to share with you guys some important stuff about this actual encounter so that you guys prepare properly. And I want to start off here by saying that a big thing about this is to not over prepare. Uh, this event is actually not incredibly difficult. So while there are definitely some units that, and in fact, I'll go into a list here, you might want to consider being prepared, you know, having them at six star, you are possibly up to level 80 for this encounter. I would go to overboard and spend a ton of resources working on units that you think are very specifically just going to be good for this encounter. You can actually work with a lot of different units. You'll probably be able to find a team of units that you already have that can end up completing this encounter. So, you know, definitely don't want to make the mistake with like one of the super boss events that came out where a lot of people started working on units like Blue, Ellie Hawk, and then realized that they weren't really good for this boss and it kind of was a waste of resources so you will probably be able to find a way to work with at least some of the units that you already have now i wanted to share with you guys some general information here and then i'll talk about some specific units so first of all the combat class requirement for the most difficult setting is 120,000. now this is a single target uh, boss encounter it's not going to be with any friends or allies as well so you will have to get the 120,000 by yourself now i want to share with you guys some screenshots as well this is actually the reward screen and i want to show this because there are actually a couple of different uh, reward options here you have this stuff which you actually get from the encounter which is going to be used for the exchange shop there will be an exchange shop coming with this event but then there's also another type of currency and that's really important because this boss is going to have a daily limit and you're going to actually want to make sure that you do the daily limit because this currency the second type of currency which i'll show you guys right here the the one at the bottom is actually going to be used for a reward gauge that will give you additional rewards so because it has a daily limit you're going to want to make sure to get the most of this as you can to make sure that you end up getting all the rewards from the reward gauge and you can see the exchange shop currency as a reward there as well and this is the actual reward gauge. So you can see 105 out of 1500. Uh, there's a daily limit and uh, you can see there's some pretty good stuff there. An, an SSR ticket and some pendants. Uh, and there's also a lot of really nice rewards from the exchange shop as well. So now let's get into some of the actual units that you might want to consider using for this encounter. Now, very importantly, I will say that the boss itself, it's a single target encounter, so you really want to lean more towards using single target. I'm not saying that units that have AoE skills are bad or anything, but you're just gonna get more usefulness, of course, by focusing on units primarily for single target. The other really important thing is that the boss is red, which means you're really going to want to lean mostly towards blue units for the advantage. Uh, red units are still gonna be okay, no problem using those, but you're definitely going to want to lean away from using green units. Now, the first unit that I want to talk about is actually somebody that most of you guys should actually have. Great timing that we are getting this right at the end of the Attack on Titan collaboration event because SR Aired is actually a fantastic unit for this encounter. So he's got a very simple, very basic skill kit, but it just works great for the overall purpose of this fight. You can see here, he's got his single target inflicts damage equal to 240% of attack on one enemy, which then gets bumped up to 300% and 500%. He's also got the cancel stances as well, but the other awesome thing is he has his own self boost here of increasing the basic stats as well as giving him that evasion for rank two and rank three. So what this is gonna mean is just additional damage and he's got a very simple, you know, single target skill right here. His ultimate also is going to do a whole bunch of damage and the great news as well is if you guys have been participating in the attack on titan collaboration then you should have six copies of this guy so you'll have his ultimate maxed out here at uh, 945 percent and that shatter is going to ignore resistance so you're going to see a big chunk of damage 
coming from this. So really basic, really awesome skill kit. Uh, you know, SR Aaron is just fantastic. I still think he is the best out of the four Attack on Titan collaboration units, even compared to the SSR ones. Um, and the fact that we all were able to get him up to six out of six for free is great. It's even better that you could use him really, really well for this event. And of course, he is the blue attribute, so you are going to end up getting that advantage as well. Now, next up, who I want to mention here is somebody that uh, is, is widely regarded as one of the, if not the best units in the game, but I want to point out something very specific about why you are definitely going to want to consider using Red Gother in your team. Not just, of course, for Invasion Arrow, which I think everyone knows how Invasion Arrow is just one of the most powerful skills in the game, increasing the skill rank of an ally. Um, super powerful, but it's actually his first card as well, Memory Arrow. Now, a lot of the times, in a lot of instances, I always feel like, man, this skill just doesn't really feel that great, but it makes sense because just of how powerful Invasion Arrow is. Maybe not great is the right word, but not useful in a lot of situations because it's just an AoE and you've got to get it to rank 2 to do something else. But the Disables attack skills is actually going to work on this boss, at least if it functions the same way that the JP version does. So not only do you have Red Gother's incredible usefulness from his Invasion Arrow, which is going to increase the single target damage of other units that you use like SR Aaron, but you've also got the usefulness coming from the Disables attack skill, which is going to be really, really nice. So not just Red Gother, if you've got anybody else who is, you know, either blue or red, who is primarily single target focused, or just has a really solid skill kit that also has Disables attack skill, you will be able to use that on this boss. So, uh, you know, just going over a couple of other units here, of course, Slater, uh, you've got the blue Slater, you've got red Slater, uh, you know, just basic single target skills. Uh, Slater doesn't really get a ton of use except for the couple applications that he's really used for, like the uh, demon raids. But, you know, like I said earlier, one of the most important things is I would not go out of your way to build units specifically for this encounter. There's a very high probability that you'll be able to just find units that you already have that are maxed out. Uh, six star you are level 80 and work with those so you know if you've already got the slaters built up for raids then you'll be able to slot them into your team for this but if you don't then i would probably still try to find other units before you spend your resources leveling him up so it kind of depends up to you uh, somebody else that i want to mention here even though she is not specifically single target she's just a really awesome support unit and she is still blue is lilia um, of course, Lilia's passive, even if you are not using Pierce units, like if you are using Pierce units on her team, that's fantastic. But even if you're not, she's still going to provide a lot of extra damage to the units that you already have on your team. Like she's just a very, very solid support unit because of her passive, whether you've got Pierce uh, units and Pierce skills or not. And on top of that, of course, she's just got a lot of awesome uh, usefulness, removes debuffs, heal, just awesome utility. So definitely not a bad option to slot in as well, but the absolute best possible unit for this encounter is unfortunately somebody who we do not have right now officially, but the JP version did have. And I will say that if for some reason Netmarble does decide to drop this banner with the release of this event and you do decide to go for it, Derriere is just, it's, this is one of the big things that she's good at. This is like her, the dream situation, single target, uh, boss encounter where you want to just nuke and do a ton of damage that is exactly what she is built for now of course i wanted to mention her last because we don't have her yet and there's a possibility that we don't actually end up getting her until after this raid is complete but if she does drop you know they did mention that the banner tomorrow is going to have two new heroes so if she is one of the two new heroes and you do decide to go for her, then you absolutely will be able to use her for this encounter. In fact, I'd say out of everybody, she's probably going to be the best person for this encounter. And her ultimate, especially with the basic stat boost and the amplify, the amount of damage that you're going to see on this is going to be absolute insanity, especially with her passive as well, which is going to give her 10% additional attack every time that she uses a skill. But, you know, that's really the overall theme of this actual encounter is, you know, uh, blue units, the best, red units still okay, stay away from green units, um, what were the other important things? Uh, 
don't go out of your way to, you know, work on a whole bunch of units just for this boss. Try to work with the units that you already have. Try to focus on single target stuff. And if you've got units that have disabled attack skills, that's also going to be useful for this encounter as well. So those are kind of the really important things that you want to keep in mind. Now, I know a lot of people have been asking me, there's two new heroes that are coming out with this pickup draw event. I was hoping that we would end up getting Blue Easton this week because she also would have been a really, really good choice for this boss encounter, but it doesn't seem like it is an original character banner because it's not step up, so unlikely it's going to be Blue Easton. Possibility that it's going to be Derriere, but if you guys are wondering here, just kind of at the end of the video, my thoughts and predictions, uh, based on the Elite PvP schedule for the Seasonal Rules, it makes the most sense for Esther Rosa to come out next week on the 10th and Derriere to come out the week after that on the 17th, at least based off of the weekly buffs. Now, we are getting two new units, so there's lots of possibilities, but there's still a lot of units that we still haven't had. Monspeed, Gloxinia are just a couple that I know they've got to release eventually, and, you know, based off of the weekly buffs that we have right now, I think there is a high possibility that we could be seeing those units. But everything is fair game, including Esterosa and Dairy Area, so there is still a chance that they drop this week as well. Anyway, I've thrown a ton of info at you guys in this video, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that this was helpful, useful information. And if you did enjoy it and you want more videos like this in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. Feel free to leave a quick like as well. It means more than you can imagine. So thank you so much to all of you guys who decide to quickly do that. I really do appreciate it. And more Grand Cross Global videos should be popping up on the screen right about now or in the suggested videos to your right or below. Feel free to check them out. More guides, tutorials, and fun videos on the channel just like this. But if not, until next time, take care, everyone. Have a great day. This is Salt of the Salty Guild, signing out.